into the layers of the card itself and the cryboard cartilage and all that. Then it drops into the tray can. And then the tray can is becomes Yes, it does. So the trachea comes down and it's going to bifurcate at the carina. Now all of this is covered in cartilage rings. Then the cartilage rings Bronchioles. So bronchi has cartilage. Bronchioles does not have cartilage. You have three levels of bronchi and three levels of bronchioles. First, you have your primary bronchi. Each primary bronchi is going to each lung. And once you get into the lung, they're going to bifurcate again. Secondary or trifurcate on the right lung. And you're going to have your secondary, and they're going into each lung. Superior lung, inferior, inferior, inferior. Yes. Again, it's still covered in cartilage, so it's still a bronchi. Bronch oh, no, and then it goes tertiary, right? And then it goes tertiary, yes. So the tertiary is splitting off of the secondary, and it's going to different areas of the lobes, and it's going to further split again beyond that and go even more specifically to different areas of the lobes. So we're still, with the next two levels, we're still branching out into just areas of the lobes. The first set, uh, level of branching out is going to be your tertiary bronchi. Still covered in cartilage? Still covered in cartilage. The next level of branching out is still going to different areas of the lobes, but this time we've lost the cartilage. Um, and now we're looking at bronchioles. So now we've gotten to an area of the lobe. Within this area, we're going to split out into different um, lobules. Each lobule is approached by a terminal bronchial. So we're going to do terminal bronchials, splitting off again. And they're going to each lung lobule. Right. 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 Exactly. And the branches that go to the individual alveolar sacs are going to be respiratory bronchioles. So each one of these is going to go to an alveolar sac. Now, when you go to an alveolar sac, as you enter the alveolar sac, it's no longer a respiratory bronchiole, but rather it's an alveolar duct. So you have an alveolar duct, which is going to open into the alveolus itself, and the rest of it's going to be all the way around. So, tracing a breath of air from the very beginning. External nares, vestibule, nasal concha, nasal meatuses, internal nares, nasopharynx, oropharynx, epiglottis, laryngopharynx, glottis, larynx, trachea, carina, primary bronchi, secondary bronchi, tertiary bronchi, bronchioles, terminal bronchioles, respiratory bronchioles, alveolar duct, alveolus. So, I got all that? Yes. Now can you do the membrane of it? The alveoli, and how, like you're going from oxygen to blood. Sure, absolutely. Absolutely. So, your alveolus is surrounded by what type of tissue? That's not the Pseudostratified is here. But when you get to the alveolus, yes, it's going to be simple squamous. So, your alveolus is going to be. I'm just going to draw one alveolus. So your alveolus is going to be a simple squamous tissue. Simple squamous. Got it? Okay. Now, whenever you have an epithelial tissue, what's it attached to? Whenever you have epithelial tissue, what is it attached to? Connective <laughs> tissue. This is the time where we're going to break that rule. Oh, it's not Schneider. So normally you have basal lamina, and you're going to have epithelial tissue, right? Oh, okay. And then you're going to have basal lamina, and then you're going to have epithelial cells attached to it. You have an apical surface with a lumen. Normally, that's what you have. Instead, we're going to change this. 
incredible work. Nice. And we're going to do. Yeah, yeah, thank you. That's sweet. <laughs> Take a look. You're going to have an apical surface with a lumen, an apical surface with a lumen, and you're going to have two rows of epithelial tissue that share a basal lamina between them. So is it more like a duct then? No, no, no. This is a solid substance. It's like a thick glue-like substance with fibers in it. But that's your basal lamina. So it's a base that it's attached to. The difference is that base is not, it's, it's like drywall, right? You have a framework, which is your connective tissue, and you are attaching your drywall to it, and your basal lamina is going to be the nails holding it on. Instead, we're putting drywall against drywall, and we're attaching it with nails. Yeah, it is a little odd, a little different in the body. So, while we're doing that here, going back to this guy, you're going to have your basal lamina on the outside, which is the epithelial tissue being attached to it. So that's the basal lamina. And on the other side of the basal lamina, you're going to have the simple squamous epithelial tissue that surrounds a capillary. So you see you have a epithelial, basal lamina, epithelial, lumen, lumen. So this is the lumen of gas, and this is the lumen inside your blood capillary. So this is filled with plasma and red blood cells. Plasma. Whereas this is filled with oxygen molecules. And a little bit of carbon dioxide and a chunk of nitrogen, etc. And they're going to exchange between that barrier. So that right there is the pleural lining that they're going to exchange between. Now, we don't have capillaries touching capillaries all the way around. They're kind of dispersed throughout, right? Mm -hmm. So when you have a space between one alveolus and another alveolus and you don't have a capillary between, then you're going to have a thin layer of connective tissue, but no diffusion is occurring there. Diffusion is occurring at this wall right here. So, so are they actually connected, or is this like four molds where they're involved? They are connected. They are connected to the same basal lamina. And that basal lamina would split off and connect it to the connective tissue around it and all that, etc. How efficient is the gas exchange? The gas exchange is extremely efficient. How do they pull it off? You're doing carbon dioxide one way and oxygen the other. You're going to study that in more detail in physiology. So but is, it the basic assisted, is it an assisted exchange? Or? No, it's not assisted. It's passive. Across the membrane, both directions. Yep. Therefore, following a bleeding or something. Right, exactly. Think of it this way. When you inhale, you're going to fill your alveolus with oxygenated air. Under pressure. So it's going to have higher oxygen content than this blood is going to have because this blood has been deoxygenated. So the air is going to pass through from a high pressure gradient to a low pressure never gradient. So it'll pass lungs. right through. So it's not, it doesn't go completely down to zero. You've always got some positive pressure. You've always got some pressure. Positive. Yeah, you've always, always got some air in there. I can see on the other side where you're always going to have a you know, blood pressure that's constant. So it's, right. It's just crazy. It's going across the same membrane and they're just passing each other. Yeah, totally passive because it's going from high gradient of oxygen to low gradient of oxygen. So it passes through. And at the same time, your blood has been deoxygenated and it's been loaded with carbon dioxide waste. So this is a high gradient for carbon dioxide and this is a low gradient for carbon dioxide. So the two are just going to switch and ultimately kind of equalize and it's going to create oxygenated blood and deoxygenated air. But as a mechanism, we're only about 10% efficient. Yeah. And as that oh, is, you mean like is it a total effusion with of all the oxygen? No, no, as a, as a no complete, it's not. As a complete machine, we're only about 10%. As a, as a matter of fact, when you are doing rescue breathing for someone mouth to mouth, you're still supplying 17% oxygen content from your Unless air that you're you expiring from your lungs. Like using so KW we don't get rid of a lot of that oxygen. We get rid of enough of that oxygen to oxygenate our blood. 